In this lecture, we will examine the schedule. You can find a paper copy of the entire schedule um, on Blackboard along with the syllabus. And I, I highly recommend that you print out both of them. In particular, I would encourage you to print out the schedule and put it somewhere where you can easily see it. Uh, if you've ever been in my office, you'll notice that I actually stick my schedules on my wall. So I can very easily just glance at them to see you know, what time um, different things are due. Uh, and like I say, remember this class does not um, has some very strict policies about lateness. So you want to make sure that you are on top of things, that you know what's coming up this week, and you know what's coming up on next week, and so you can plan things. Um, and so that way you won't forget anything and you'll have everything done. So I'm just going to go over the first week and use it as kind of an example of what the uh, schedules will look like and also so we can talk about what's, what's due this first week. Um, but that's why I'm not going to go over the all six weeks of the schedule in this lecture. I'm just going to look at the first week. So in the first week schedule, um, and you'll notice I always give the dates. It'll say week, week 1, May 16th to May 20th. And I treat this as a school week, so 20th is a, is a Sunday, and that's what I consider the end of the week um, for our purposes. Uh, so in this section, what I want people, uh, I list what I want people to do. I'll ask them to watch the lectures and videos in the week one video folder, right? Um, and I want to make clear that when I say video, this can also include things like podcasts and, and stuff like that. Um, I simply mean any kind of media file. So you want to make sure you do all that. Then you want to make sure you to complete all the readings in the week one readings folder. Uh, right, and all these these are references to, to items on Blackboard, and then you are also and you can do those at your leisure. There's no requirement about when you do those, uh, so long as they're done, um, and so that you can complete the following assignments and quizzes by Sunday, 11:59 um, p.m. The Sunday there refers to May 20th, right? It's the end of the week for our purposes, and that would include the first response paper, the museum ex exhibit critique paper the web scavenger hunt quiz one, the lecture and video quiz one, and reading quiz one, right? And this is why I emphasize, first of all, that you want to make sure that you do the readings and watch the videos uh, first. You would then fill out the response paper and then you would take the quizzes, right? Don't, don't do them out of order because otherwise you're kind of hurting yourself, right? It makes sense. You, you do the response paper to make sure you've really understood the information and that will give you a good basis to take the quizzes. Um, and I try and make sure everything is outlined clearly. Um, you know, I, I try and uh, make sure that the Blackboard has folders that will keep things organized. Um, so, I mean, theoretically, if you wanted to, you could do all your work on a Sunday. Uh, I would not encourage you to do so, um, according to this week. And, and one thing I want to point out, every week, uh, most, most days that things are due are Sunday, but that's not always the case. There are some days that are different. And I will generally send out an, a reminder email each week about uh, when there's that kind of day change. But for our first week, it's Sunday, 11.59 p.m. So if you actually go to Blackboard, you should see something like this, right? You can see there's the syllabus, there's the schedule, there's an assignments folder, and underneath it says week one, right? So um, that's basically what you should see. And I think the schedule and syllabus are fairly self-explanatory. Like I said, you should make sure that you open those up, save them, and print them. Uh, so that you'll have those available for your reference. But um, to explore, let's go ahead and now explore the other things. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look at the assignments folder. So if you were to go to the assignments folder, there you will see the various assignments, right? And it says museum project, response papers, and other assignments. So um, the response papers, those weekly response papers that are, are due, um, that are each worth 25 points, they have their own folder. Um, the other assignments that are not response papers uh, and aren't directly connected to the um, museum project, they have their own folder. And also there is um, a folder for the uh, museum project itself, which will have the assignments that are related to the museum project. Um, so that's where you would go to find the various assignments that are listed in the schedule. So if you were to click on the uh, response paper assignment, because that will probably be the first assignment you actually do in this class, you'll see that there are two things, right? There is a, um, it says, um, you'll see it says response paper one, and then below it, it says attached files, RP01 introduction assignment. So here's how this works. 
To get the assignment that you need to fill out, you click on the RP01 Introduction Assignment DOCX. That's the actual assignment that you will fill out. You would then save it um, as a doc or docx file once you have filled it out, and then click on the Response Paper 1 link, and that will bring you to a place where you can upload it, right? Where you can actually attach the file. So keep that in mind, right? So there's two things here. The part in blue, Introduction to Assignment DOCX, that's the actual assignment page that you'll fill out. And then the Response Paper 1 is what you would click on to actually f uh, complete or to actually upload that assignment. So if you were to click on the Response Paper 1 assignment, you would get this, right? This is the, um, this is the assignment. It says Response Paper 1 Introduction. And it says answer the following questions. Your answer to each question should be at least 250 words in length. This is why it's important you perform it in the proper format so I can check the word length. Um, I don't think you can answer the question in enough depth if you lose less than 250 words. Now, if um, I'll just go through the questions so you can kind of understand them. Um, so the first question says, you're in charge of museum. From that perspective, describe what public history is and what factors you have to consider if you want your museum to be successful and what success actually means. And then you'll see in parentheses, it says introduction, history beyond the classroom. Well, that is a reading, right? That is a reading that's going to be in the readings folder of the week one uh, folder. So that's where you would go to get that reading. But you answer that question based on that reading. And it's important that I can tell from your answer that you have actually done the reading. Uh, question two is, uh, what problems does the cynical historian see with history today? How does he believe that public history can help resolve those problems? What do you think of his ideas? That is going to be in the videos folder of the week one folder. Um, and that's a link that will take you to a YouTube video, which is uh, basically this guy ca who calls himself a cynical historian talking about these issues. And then you'll listen to it and then you'll, you'll say what you think about them. Um, and notice those uh, those first two questions, each are kind of connected to a quiz, right? There's a readings quiz, so it'll be, uh, you'll write a response to the reading and then take a quiz. And then, you know, the cynical historian, that, that would be the videos quiz. And then uh, the third one, it says, explain what you learned about public history from the National Council on Public History website. And it gives you the, the website in, um, in parentheses, so you can actually go to the website and read about it and learn something. And that website will also have questions for the uh, web scavenger hunt quizzes. So you can see the strong connection between the response papers and the quizzes and why it's so important to take the do the response papers first before you take the quizzes. Now you'll note if you look at the schedule that the that the response paper isn't the only assignment that's due this uh, this in week one. There is also a museum critique assignment due, right? If you look at the schedule, you'll see that museum exhibit critique. Now, um, so let's say you hit the back button, you would be at this place here where it says museum project response papers, other assignments. So response paper assignments are response paper assignments that can be found in that folder. Anything that's got the word museum in it will be in the museum project folder because those are things that are really meant to help you develop that um, towards that project. So it says museum exhibit project or critique uh, assignment that has the word museum pro, uh, in it. So it's in that folder. It's not in the other assignments folder. Um, for week one, there's really nothing due in the other assignments folder, but that will come up later. But for now, um, you would uh, click on the museum project folder. And if you click on that folder, and then you'll see the museum exhibit critique paper uh, in much the same format as the response paper one. Um, and if you were to click on the assignment part, you would get this right? Museum exhibit critique paper. Uh, for this assignment, you will visit an actual history museum, right? So if you live near, let's say you live in Greenwood, you could go to the museum or you could go to the Railroad Historical Center, though I should t point out that if you travel, you're on your own in terms of liability, um, but you could go visit one of those museums or you could go to an online museum such as the National Museum of African American History and Culture, the National Museum of American History, or the War Memorial of Korea. Right, so you can visit a museum physically, uh, though that's something you'll take care of yourself. And like I said, you're responsible for that. Or you can visit one virtually. And what you would do then is write a paper of at least 700, 750 words describing a particular exhibit, not the museum as a whole. You need to choose a particular exhibit, um, what that exhibit teaches, and how that exhibit fits into the overall story being told by the museum. And finally, what you think the exhibit does well. The purpose here is not to, to just like criticize the, the museums. The, muse the purpose of this is to see what did they do, do right so you can think about how you can make your own museum project later, right? Um, 
So very simple uh, assignment uh, though, but like I said, I am keeping track of words and I you will lose points if I detect that you're padding, right? You have to actually say something with your words, but that's the museum exhibit critique paper, which is also due in week one. So if you were to go back to the initial online content, uh, Blackboard content page, you know, you would see something like this syllabus schedule assignments in week one. Uh, later on, there'll be more weeks, but right now there's only the week one. And if you were to click on week one, you would see the following. Uh, and there is the Cynical Historian video. That's a link. If you click on that, it will bring you to the Cynical Historian. Um, if you have, for some reason, trouble, if it doesn't want to open, you may right-click and then open it in a new tab, or you might have to disable pop-up blocker or something like that. But there, uh, in, within week one, is where I'm going to put all those readings and videos and stuff. Um, there's where you can find that Cynical Historian video. And then you can see the response paper reading one, right? I keep that separate from the response assignment so it's clear which is the reading which is the assignment but if you click on that it's going to give you the pdf of the assignment i, I, I would encourage you to print it out sometimes th typically there'll be more than one reading but here there's only one reading for this week so that's where you would actually get the content that you need to know and also that's where the links um, to the various videos that you should also watch will be there and so you know okay what do i have to watch for week one and what do i have to read for week one everything in the week one folder Right? That's why I've got it set up that way. Now, you'll notice that there's also a quizzes folder. That's where all the quizzes are for week one. I put them in a separate folder so that way you don't accidentally take a quiz. Right? You may th uh, just, act just forget where you are or misclick and accidentally start trying to take a quiz for a reading you have not done yet. But if you were to click on that quizzes folder, that's where you'd see the various quizzes that will come up for week one, and it should match the schedule. If it doesn't, please let me know. And just as a reminder, because I do not uh, allow retakes for forgotten quizzes, you have three quizzes for week one. One is the web, web scavenger hunt quiz one, the lecture and video quiz one, and reading quiz one. It doesn't really matter what order you take the quizzes in. What does matter is that you do the readings and watch the videos and look at the website before you take the quizzes. That's what's important in terms of order.